Hello, everyone, and welcome to Into the Spotlight. This is your host, Osaka Jack. And with me today, I have a very special guest. Uh, special guest, would you sign in, please? Yes, hello. My name is Amy Keating Rogers. How about that? And this is not a coincidence. This is not some artist that I found that has the same name. This is the... Well, <laughs> for anybody who doesn't know who you are, honestly, why are you listening to my show? But <laughs> could you give them a quick intro? What do you do? Yes. I um, was a writer on seasons one and two of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. But that's not even a sliver of your incredibly long career here. I'm, not long career. I'm sorry. That's offensive. <laughs> that's <laughs> proliferous. Okay. Proliferous. That's a better word. Okay. I, oh. I was not offended. <laughs> oh, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> but no, you've, you've worked on and continue to work on just a plethora of shows. Yeah, I've been really fortunate to, um, in uh, on the shows that I've worked on. Um, I ended up uh, as a production assistant on Powerpuff Girls, mm -hmm. um, and they needed help with the writing, and I uh, started as a playwright, and I had a play being produced in Hollywood at the time, so they knew I was a writer. And the way Cartoon Network worked then, um, the, the writers were in-house, and then we kind of got the writers and the storyboard artists and the um, character designers and the cleanup artists. Everybody moved from show to show. It was okay. lovely, and wonderful. And basically you had this family, right, um, right. family. And so I got passed from Powerpuff Girls to Dexter's Lab to Samurai <laughs> Jack to Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. And I ended up doing little freelance things for uh, Johnny Bravo and I even wrote a Billy and Mandy outline. So you get... Um, I think you've just described the childhood of most of the people that are listening right now. <laughs> you yeah. have been their childhood. I mean, that's... Which is... I'm, I'm honored. Yeah. Um, I'm glad to have been a part of it. And with Powerpuff, I was so lucky. Um, it exploded in a way that none of us ever expected, which oh, um, okay. I is ref reflected for me, I, you know, since I had this experience, again, I'm going to, I'm going to apologize for the mowing in the background. <laughs> my gardeners are here. Um, it adds character. It shows it this is, this is not rehearsed. This is not. live gardening along with an how, interview. It shows how forgetful I am because this happens every <laughs> week. So you think I would actually know that this is when this would happen. Um, but um, on Powerpuff, it became this, you know, cultural phenomenon and, you know, it was all over on t-shirts and we ended up, um, getting to write books and comics oh, yeah. and because Craig trusted me with the characters, I was the first person who got to write chapter books. Oh, wow. um, so I kind of established, this is how chapter books will work. Right. And same thing with the comics. And then it could, once, once I wrote a couple, it could be then passed on to other writers who basically follow my, follow what I set up, follow my lead of, of the voices. I got right. anytime, anytime the Powerpuff Girls were interviewed in a magazine, uh -huh. I was the one writing their dialogue, you know, oh, what wow. they the magazine. Okay. That was, that was, I got to write that and I feel really, really fortunate. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I I knew the Powerpuff Girls, and I probably do. You know, you know, you tapped into my brain really well. Oh yeah, um, sure. So it was it was a fantastic first place. Oh yeah. Start because I never expected to write in animation. That wasn't an aspiration. I what had. was the original goal when you uh, oh, were studying? Original, original was to be an actor. Um, okay. That's what I uh, I acted in high school. I. And then I went to college um, at Occidental College and studied theater. And then I went to graduate school at CalArts and got my MFA in acting. Um, and ever since I was a little girl, I wanted to act. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what my focus was. But then I started writing plays at the end of college and continued in graduate school. Mm -hmm. um, and I was also trying to act, but acting in Los Angeles is challenging. And I'm I sure, yeah. Yeah, I could do plays, but plays don't pay a lot of money. Right, um, right. And I wasn't getting commercials um, or, you know, TV stuff or anything like that. And it's so, kind of a catch-22, isn't it? Because you have to live in Los Angeles to get the parts, but living in Los Angeles is so expensive, you have to have parts to pay for it. Right, exactly. So yeah. um, I had this, as an actor, you end up getting 
kind of random odd jobs. Mm -hmm. And um, the, I have um, a friend who said, hey, do you want to be a PA on uh, my first P production assistant job was on Johnny Bravo. And okay. um, prior to that, when she asked me that, I was working as an um, as an operator at 1-800-DENTIST, which is a service here in America. <laughs> That refers people to dentists. So you call a call center and you say, I need a dentist in Spokane, Washington. Okay. And so you go on your computer and you try and find somebody, a dentist in Spokane, Washington. <laughs> um, and I, I was getting burnt out on that job. Sure. I mean, it sounds useful, but not very fulfilling. Well, it's just, you know, people who are calling generally are in dental pain. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, they're not in a good mood. Um, <laughs> So that's the problem. And then people often used um, our uh, 1-800 line as a 1-900 line and uh, would say inappropriate <laughs> things to the operators. So uh, <laughs> it, it began to wear on you being uh, sure, sure. that way. So that was, that was a bit of a drag. So when it you know, when the uh, opportunity came up to work um, work on Johnny Bravo, I jumped out. Yeah, and then, of course. Yeah, and then um, and then the and then Powerpuff came along after that, and and I moved onto that show, and it was it was a very wise choice. Yeah, absolutely. Now I'm curious. Um, it sounds like uh, Cartoon Network at that time. You mentioned everybody would shift and go from one show to the other show to the other. Mm -hmm. Did you ever get confused? Like at one point you'd be writing for um, uh, Fosters and you're like, wait, no, no, that's that that's something Bubbles would say, not. No, not really. Oh. Just because you know all those shows were so distinctive. Okay. Okay. Um, so and and we wrote them at different. You know, it was that. Um, you know, we wrote Powerpuff Girls and then that uh, season ended and while. Um, while it was being decided to move on to a second season, mm -hmm. you, know, you do another thing. So it was you were just kind of going back and forth to, to okay. different things. It wasn't. It was generally. Um, it, there was only one time I was writing uh, on Johnny Bravo and Fosters, um, and I think I was trying to work on Powerpuff too. And I was pregnant. Oh and my gosh! I had to go. Okay, somebody else do Powerpuff, and you know, it was you know, there's a point where you're doing too much. Yes, um, yes. But I wasn't confused between the characters. It was just a whole lot of characters. Right, <laughs> whole right. Lot of <laughs> yeah. And uh, from that work on uh, Cartoon Network, you got five Emmy nominations. Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah, the shows, again, the shows I worked on were really good. And the crews behind them and, you know, everybody worked so incredibly hard and, and to make those shows really, really awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, the, the, the shows um, that I was n nominated for, you know, the whole show was nominated. Wow. Um, so it was, you know, absolutely wonderful to be a part of that. Yeah, and we mentioned this a little bit before we started, but um, the hope is, <laughs> the hope is that some of the songs from My Little Pony will get the nominations. Yeah, I hope the songs do, or I hope an episode does. Um, you know, again, okay, sorry, leaf blower. <laughs> Absolutely. I hope that we get acknowledged. I mean, it was great. I think we had two Emmy nominations last year for songs. Mm. Um, and I forget if we had anything else nominated. You, you would probably know better than me. Oh, uh, you caught me. I, I don't remember off the top of my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know Megan was nominated and I know Charlotte was nominated for their songs. And of course, Daniel Ingram right. uh, doing the music. Right, right. Um, so, yeah, I think it would be great if any of us got nominated again just you know because as you know the i mean the songs are awesome in they, touch. they are yeah and and everybody enjoys the episodes and loves the writing and and how they you know and all that stuff so i i hope we do get that kind of acknowledgement that would be nice and and you did work on i'm sorry one of the most easily identifiable songs is the one that you wrote smile song yes i did <laughs> And I, I do hope everybody listening has heard your original rendition of them, 
because I remember back in the day, before BronyCon, I remember you mentioned it on Twitter, and I went nuts on you, and I apologize for that. (laughs) No, that's okay. Yeah, you said everybody, yeah, you said ask her to sing it, ask her to sing it, which is why I very purposely, for BronyCon, brought my lyrics. I remember watching it on the live stream. Yeah. It was like three or four in the morning for me, but I was like, oh, I got to stay up and hear this. I've got to hear this. I really, I, yeah, that was very uh, nerve wracking to sing that in front of everybody, but (laughs) a lot of fun and I'm glad people enjoyed it. And as I've said, I always um, do a version of my song and I actually found out that Cindy Morrow does the same thing. Um, Oh, now we have something to bug Cindy about. (laughs) Um, Yeah. That she has her own versions and she's, she's so talented. She actually plays the piano Mm. and is, you know, you know, I, I, I just make up tunes and I don't have any sort of accompaniment or anything like that. <laughs> um, I just wing it and sing it a cappella. Um, but Cindy, I think I don't know what her recordings sound like because I've never heard them, but I think she does a similar thing to what I do. That's that's how she writes music as well. Yeah, I, I, think- I can envision just a uh, original track recording being released at some point. Just yeah. you and her, to, uh, to anybody who wrote a song. Heck, we'll even get M.A. Larson to re- to release the original Super Speedy Cider Squeezy 6000. Oh, my gosh. That would be – yeah, I know he doesn't record things. Uh, <laughs> and and that's, you know, totally – it's just different ways of working. Mm-hmm. Um, as long as you develop some sort of rhythm for it that Daniel can then riff off of and, yeah. and you know, shape a – you know, write a song and everything, then you're good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think you guys did wonderful work on that. Honestly, guys, if you haven't heard it, go check the archives. It's it's in there. She's <laughs> she's sung these before, and they sound awesome. Okay. And I do think it was uh, Midwestria. That's right. After Midwestria, there are some videos online of karaoke. Yes, there are. Um, I love to sing. Um, when I was in... High school, I always did musicals. Um, I, I I just I used to sing in a restaurant. Um, again, something I did just you know to make some money. Right. Um, and as I've you know taken on writing instead of acting, um, my you know all all that other stuff has kind of fallen by the wayside. Even though I love um, love to sing, um, and right. my daughter sings. And she takes lessons now, and I kind of toy with the idea of taking lessons again, too, because I enjoy it so much. Sure. Um, but then I, um, my husband gave me a ukulele for my birthday, <laughs> and that has encouraged me to do more singing. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I would sing song, you know, and when I was writing songs, obviously, for, for shows, I would sing them. But otherwise, I, you know, don't just go. I mean, I, I do kind of sing around the house. But right. right. In learning the ukulele, I have been singing along as I play my ukulele. So oh, okay. it awakened that that joy for me. Of, oh, sure. Of, and so I did um, a rendition of the original, my original My Little Pony theme song at Canterlot Gardens. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, playing my ukulele mm-hmm. uh, and singing it. And considering my ukulele skills, I don't, uh, maybe I should have sung it a cappella that time too no i'm sure it was wonderful i'm i guarantee you everybody just went nuts on that <laughs> yeah it was it was it was very fun to sing for everybody but it was that one was even scarier because not only was i singing i was doing i was playing the ukulele which um you know i i, I have not mastered <laughs> Well, I heard somebody say at one point that uh, they never considered themselves to be learning how to play the violin, because mm-hmm. what is the exact point when you go from learning to play and playing? Mm-hmm. They they said, I'm playing the violin, I'm just not playing it very well yet. Yes, that is that is me in the ukulele. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, those uh, the karaoke videos from Midwestria, you nailed Summer Lovin'. <laughs> Thank you. Even, and- even the last high note. Nah! You got it. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, my musical theater background uh, <laughs> comes comes into play. Yeah, that uh, that was very fun to sing with Mitch. Um, and and singing um, "I Will Survive" is one of my favorite songs to sing um, mm. doing karaoke. So that was that was fun too. And just getting to see everybody, you know, all the 
the fans singing. Yeah. Um, well, and, and you did the absolute ultimate crowd pleaser of all time, which is uh, Don't Stop Believing. Don't Stop Believing, <laughs> yes. And I was going to sing it, and I didn't know that these other uh, guys had signed up for it, too. So ah. like, they called all three of our names, and we, the three of us went up there, and then... Uh, was it just three of us that sang that, or was that when everybody the came up? The video, uh, the one that I saw online has a whole crowd up there. So I, I think everybody just said, hey, we all want to sing it, and everybody came oh, up yeah. on the stage, which was fantastic. <laughs> oh, yeah, you guys rocked it. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, I love I that again. That's another song that I always love singing um, in karaoke. And uh, I think it's required to sing that in karaoke. I don't think they let you leave until it has been sung once. I, yeah. And I didn't realize that it was so popular. It's just a song that I grew up loving. Really? Uh, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I had the Journey Escape album when yeah. I was young. Um, <laughs> and and that was a, a favorite. So I've, oh, I've been oh. singing that for a long time. <laughs> well, um, related to the ukulele, uh, yeah. there is a way right now for people to get you to play them a ukulele song, isn't there? there Very roundabout segue there. That was, but I like it. Oh, yeah. And, and you can see me play the ukulele. Um, yes, that's if, right. If you go to my Kickstarter mm-hmm. um, page, and, and or if you go to Kickstarter in general and put in Jason Bateman thinks I'm dead, you will land in th- this strange place where there's a video of me singing a snippet of my Jason Bateman thinks I'm dead song <laughs> um, on the ukulele. Mm-hmm. Um, which is amusing in itself that I figured figured out how to do that. Well, that the, the like three chords that I happen to know happen to work with my Jason Bateman thinks I'm dead song. Hey, uh, don't don't knock three chords. The entire song of Don't Stop Believing is four chords. So you just need one more and you've got it. Okay. Well, I <laughs> I think I actually have four chords down, and so awesome. I might be able to play Don't Stop Believing on my ukulele, and that might be a goal for this afternoon. Awesome. Um, <laughs> so, but my Jason Bateman thinks I'm dead project um, is that uh, back in 2008, I had, well, let me rewind way earlier. Okay, back, come back. When was, back when I was a child, I went to grade school with um, Jason Bateman, who at that time was just a boy I went to grade school with. Right. And then, um, J- <laughs> oh, it's ridiculous. Um, and, so, so we started going to school together in second grade. And then in third grade, he decided that I was one of his girlfriends. Yay. Um, and uh, we kissed. Mm-hmm. But then in fourth grade, I um, it, it seemed like uh, like, the, you know, the, the fire had gone out uh, and and he had moved on. I was broken hearted by this. Of course. And, and I actually wrote him a song called Think of the World oh. and sang it at a um, school assembly. And he didn't know it was dedicated to him. but um, mm-hmm. I, And I also don't know how I convinced um, the faculty and administration of my elementary school to let me sing at uh, at this thing. I have no idea. <laughs> like, it was just, I was a very, I guess... I guess I'm more like my daughter than I realized. Um, <laughs> because I just kind of went there and I said, I'd like to sing this song. And they said, okay, <laughs> I played it on the piano and I sang the song. Um, and, and, you know, that was, you know, just me bemoaning this ended re- relationship, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you know, as fourth graders do. Yes. Uh, and then, In fifth grade, during my fifth grade year, I had terrible headaches. Um, And the summer between fifth and sixth grade, um, they discovered that I had a brain tumor in my head. Yeah. That's that's awful. It it was very awful. It was was not a good time. Um, And I had the tumor removed um, right before school began, uh, right before sixth grade. And when I came back to school, Mm. Jason wasn't at school anymore because he began his acting career. Oh, uh, okay. A show called um, Little House on the Prairie. Right. Yes. So I didn't see Jason and, you know, I just was going to school. And um, then this one day, he uh, there was a phone call at my house and I answered the phone and it was Jason and he said, Whoa. hey, this is Jason Bateman. I heard you were dead. <laughs> no, I'm dead. <laughs> I, uh, 
I had a brain tumor and it was benign. And I explained the whole thing to him. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of the end of the conversation. <laughs> Glad that I was alive and we continued on. And then I didn't see him again till we were 14. Mm-hmm. And I was at it was something at something called the Youth and Film Awards. And um, he was there because he was nominated for being Derek on Silver Spoons. Right. And, mm-hmm. and I was there with my friends because we wanted to see cute famous guys. <laughs> We were trying to get pictures with C. Thomas Howell and, um, oh gosh, uh, Ricky Schroeder. Of course. You know, whoever. And I saw Jason there because he was nominated. And, you know, I know Jason. So I went up to Jason and I said, hey, Jason, it's Amy Keating. And he said, oh, my God, I thought you were dead. <laughs> he just looked at me, you know, ghost white and stunned. <laughs> and I said, no, Jason, I told you, remember, I'm not dead. <laughs> And, you know, that was the end of that conversation. I'm sure for anybody just watching on the side, if they couldn't hear specifically what was saying, just that girl just said three words to him and he turned ghost white. What did she say? (laughs) That girl. Um, So then fast forward to 2008 and I was just kind of, I just, you know, thinking funny thoughts. Mm -hmm. And and I thought, I wonder if Jason, who, even though we both work in the industry, Mm -hmm. over all these years, we have not run into each other. Hmm. Um, and I, so I thought, I wonder if Jason still thinks I'm dead. <laughs> uh, so I asked my husband, I said, what do you think if I, you know, made a documentary of me trying to find Jason and tell him that I'm not dead? And he thought it was hilarious. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> so we didn't even have a video camera at that time. So <laughs> We bought a video camera, and I just started shooting video of this, mm-hmm. of me trying to, the different ways, mm-hmm. trying to find Jason through Six Degrees of Jason Bateman, right. and tell him that I am not dead. <laughs> so I made the movie, and so I shot it, and I edited it, and I had never edited a movie before, so I had to learn um, how to edit in Final Cut, and I did that, and then... Um, uh, but the way I edited it, I used all these images um, from movies that he's been in. Okay. Um, um, things that I've done because I kind of did a recap of. Let me tell you what Jason and I are doing the past, you know, chunk of chunk of years. Right, right. And so I go through our careers and I use all these images that I don't have the rights for. Oh, I see. And, yeah. um, and I also used music. Um, so uh, for each. Uh, kind of time period period blah, 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 period from um, when I was uh, when I was in grade school and when I was 14 each of those has background music according to the time period so I think there's um, there's a BG song and there's nice. a song and again I don't have the rights to these so, yeah. so the starter campaign uh, is to uh, finally even though the movie is finished mm-hmm. To go through and get the rights for these things, and uh, if you're if you're actually um, trying to get a movie out there, you have to pay for um, insurance so that somebody doesn't come and sue you. Right. Okay. Uh, hire various people to get all these clearances. I have over a hundred images wow. that I cleared. I would hire somebody to do that because mm-hmm. I have to you know do my day job. Right. Uh, um, somebody to clear the music. So it's just going through all of that. And and so that's what the Kickstarter campaign is about. <laughs> because I think you mentioned that you did uh, do a private screening for a few friends, which is allowed, is allowed. I mean, private showing. Yeah. If you do screenings, it's fine as long as you're not charging any yes. uh, fee. So I've done a couple screenings <laughs> for friends and everybody loves it. And I tried to get distribution. Um, and while everybody who saw it um, thought it was adorable. They didn't think that they could make any money on it, which means uh, yeah. they get distributed. Um, so, as you mentioned, ukulele song, mm. one, some, one of the uh, uh, in Kickstarter incentives is for me to record one of my ukulele songs, um, one that's in my repertoire, um, and then there's another incentive um for one, that I would write you a little thank you song and sing it uh, on my ukulele. Yes. So, and currently, I have 117 backers, mm-hmm. and 
And I'm almost at $6,000. I'm at 5915 Which, I mean, that, that that's no small chunk of change, but... I, I need 80000 <laughs> Yeah, but we need 80000 So. And I, and I have 17 days to go. Um, so I, um, uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that I will get the money, but if I don't, I'm going to find another way because I know, um, folks do want to see it. So I, I, that's great of you. That, that's something I was honestly not going to specifically ask, but yeah, good for you for not giving up because I, oh. I know it's got to be hard if you, I mean, this, this still has a chance. We're going to push this. Everybody, seriously, I, I'll talk about nothing for like 30 seconds. Everybody go click the link, get to the <laughs> Kickstarter page and donate something. Come on back. We, you won't miss anything. Uh, okay. Maybe not, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would be fantastic if everybody could do that. And, yeah. you know, no amount is too small besides zero, I guess. That's too small. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think the minimum is $1 that they'll allow. You know, minimum no, is $1. But you could get great things like T-shirts and copies of the DVD and sign oh. stuff for me. And um, like I said, the recordings of the songs. You can have lunch with me if you have a lot of money. You can have dinner <laughs> with me if you have even more money. Um, so, yeah, all of that would be fantastic. And then I could kind of distribute it in a big way. Um, and and that would be really neat to kind of bring this to a you know a conclusion of getting it out there well sure though uh, to be honest i mean if it if it continues to be a challenge you could at some day make another movie about the challenges of getting jason maven <laughs> thinks i'm dead recorded and <laughs> distributed yes i could i could do that um i don't know my poor family has been living that in real life so <laughs> I don't know if they need me actually making a documentary about that. <laughs> like, enough, Amy, move on. <laughs> yeah, but everybody, seriously, uh, do uh, click on the link. We'll have it right underneath the video. Uh, go check it out. Pledge a dollar. Pledge, pledge whatever you got in your pocket. It would be really awesome to see this movie get out there. Yes, please. Thank you so much. And there's lots of uh, interesting little things. That you could have her do a song for you. I mean, come on. How cool is that? Now, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but you haven't written a song for somebody since the piano performance for Jason Bateman. Is that right? Um, a song for somebody? Yeah, specifically no. for somebody. I have written, as you know, I've written songs. Well, yeah. But I have not written a song for somebody. Okay. Um, the only, yes, only Jason Bateman. There you go. You could be in some of the most elite club in the world. <laughs> Yeah, she's written a song for Jason Bateman and me. And me. And that's it. Exactly. Well, and the other guy who donated too. But right, you know. And it might not be as complex as my Jason Bateman uh, heartfelt, uh, painful fourth right, grade. Right, probably. Uh, you know, but it'll still be very nice. Sure. And it'll be it'll be equally heartfelt uh, saying thanks. Well, it'll uh, be a completely different emotion. This this won't be a you know terribly sorry that things didn't work out this will be a thank you so much for donating type song yeah, and you get to hear that song in the movie oh, uh, awesome. I, I, it, yeah it's it, there's, there's so much goofy stuff in this movie just i think i, I have a very goofy brain and um <laughs> and i make a real fool of myself a lot of times throughout this movie my um my heart is broken my oh. my hopes are dashed oh there's it's it's a roller coaster, um, but it's a lot of fun, and um, and it ends on an on an uplifting note. So oh, that goody, that's good. But we won't spoil the ending, so you know, nope. we we got to get this released to get the full ending out, guys. Come on, <laughs> come on. I haven't heard any specific reviews, but I have heard general reviews in positive. Okay, hey. well, good. That's, I'm gonna go. yeah. I'd like to see it, frankly. I, I really would. Now, do you? Th now, th this is just uh, nothing that anybody's going to hold you to. But mm -hmm. should this get funded, do you think you'd be willing to screen it at an upcoming con? I would definitely do that. Ooh, yeah, okay, once okay. once it's all legal and yeah. all that stuff, then I'm allowed to. Oh, awesome! Right, because it's you know you're paying for the rights for the songs right. and you're paying for the rights for the images, mm -hmm. and that's what's act actually. Um, I forget if you brought it up or one of the bronies brought up um, that I should show it at a con. But again, the problem is um, then somebody, you know, I knew none of my friends would videotape it when they saw the screening and put right. it online. Yeah. But 
you know, there's, you know, I, as, as somebody might do that. There's yes, that. Yes. And then it's just a matter of, I don't want to get in trouble. And right. so, yeah. uh, but once, yeah, once it was all cleared and all that, that's what, that's the whole thing. That's what the money mm-hmm. went on. And so, and since bronies are the ones contributing, I'd be happy to show it at a con because mm-hmm. I, I think folks would really dig it. Ooh, that'd be awesome. Okay, guys, come on. Let's, let's really push this through. We want to see it at an upcoming con. That'd be so awesome. Now, you, did ju- you just finished uh, EQLA. You just went yes. to that one. And that's mm-hmm. your fourth con, right? Yes, it is. That's uh, BronyCon, uh, Midwestria, Canelot Gardens, and now EQLA. Yes. Oh, you're becoming a pr- pro at cons. I am. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun. And every one of them has been so different um, mm-hmm. and unique. Um, certainly BronyCon, since it was the first, was very overwhelming and exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was, you know, it was really, it was very cool, it being the first. And, you know, there was the fire during the writer's panel, so yep. that was extra exciting. <laughs> um, Midwestria was completely different in that, you know, BronyCon had 5,000 people there. And Midwestria, I think, had... 200 to 500 maybe it was definitely smaller a more personal venue yeah yeah much more personal and mellow and it was um whereas BronyCon, lauren was there tara was there john delancey was there um so you had these big names there at um at uh midwestria it was me and mitch and charlotte fullerton Mm -hmm. So, which, it, to be honest, in the Brony community, those are pretty big names in of themselves. Yeah, which is very no, it's it's just funny, and so it was much more. It was it was like I keep saying I've said this to Mitch a couple times. It was like being at camp because <laughs> you saw the same people so much, you mm-hmm. got familiar with them, and it was like you were just kind of hanging out with them. Right, and that was really really lovely. I I, I made a lot of nice friends there, and it's awesome. And then in Canterlark Gardens, it was big again, mm-hmm. but, you know, because of its proximity um, to, so, um, so Cleveland uh, mm-hmm. was where uh, Canterlark Gardens was and Chicago yes. was where Midwestria was. Some people came to both. Right. So, you know, I'm, and, and that's the cool thing. I begin, I'm beginning to see the same faces and mm-hmm. recognize mm-hmm. And and that's really nice. And that happened again at Equestria LA. Some mm-hmm. people who've been at BronyCon were at Equestria LA. I've uh-huh. I've hung out with Final Draft now at all four cons and we <laughs> and lunch in um, Chicago. We went to this place, Portillo's. Um, the oh sauce- yes. Oh my gosh, it was so good. Mm-hmm. Um, and I became friends with this lovely young woman named Hannah. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was at, she's, oh, what's her, I forget what her handle is on Twitter. It's Hollywood Gem. Hollywood Gem, yes. Um, she, uh, so she was at Midwestria and she was at, um, she was at Canterlot Gardens. So, you know, you, you get to hang out with these people and get to know them. Yeah. And, and that was really, really, really fun. And Equestria LA was great because I didn't have to fly anywhere. That would be a big advantage, I'm sure. <laughs> drive to Anaheim and hang out with everyone. So that was cool. That's awesome. So, okay. If you could choose uh, a new venue, where would you like to see a BronyCon at? Oh gosh. I mean, Anaheim obviously has, you know, a good priority for you because it's so close. You can drive, you don't have to fly, but I would love um, if it could coincide with, um, <laughs> with where I have family. So oh, I, yeah, so, that's good. Well, and that was the drag about um, I didn't get to go to Everfree. Um, mm-hmm. And I have family in uh, who live outside Seattle. And I really wanted um, my in-laws to see what this what this is all about. Oh, yeah. It's very, it's very hard to describe to somebody who hasn't been a part of this what, you know, what's going on with with the bronies and everything. Very true. Very true. Um, so I would love to go to Everfree Northwest. Hint, hint. Um, <laughs> Actually, Everfree Northwest is the only con I'm going to be able to attend next year. Oh, wow. So, maybe, I, maybe we both will. We'll see what happens. We can hope. We can hope. Um, and, uh, I mean, I have 
Are, have there been any cons in like the Phoenix area, of Arizona? You know, I'm not sure that uh, some people have just posted a list. There's, I think, 30 cons next year Wowza. that have been uh, confirmed. I'm not sure if there's any in the Phoenix area, but that would be interesting. Yeah. Um, Possibly not in the dead heat of summer. Oh, no, that would be terrible. <laughs> that would be really bad. Um, or San Antonio. Um, I've never been to Austin. I'm trying to think of places, the thing, but that's the funny thing. I The only one I actually got to kind of check out the surrounding area was when I went to BronyCon because my daughter and I went in a day early and we did the fastest tour of Manhattan ever, <laughs> uh, especially considering it was blazing hot and humid and bleh. Um, but I we remember saw, that. We went and saw a Broadway show and we did, you know, we did it up as much as we could in the amount of time that we had. Mm -hmm. Um, But I didn't get to check out Chicago and I'm actually, that was a bummer, but it was just not in my schedule to fly in ahead and and check things out again. So, um, so, you know, that's why LA is, is great, but you know, wherever. (laughs) I do remember BronyCon. I remember, um, you, on your Twitter handle, you actually passed the phone off to your daughter, and I, she was doing Twitters, and we were all, and well, I don't know, I say we, I was definitely watching it, and a few others were, and yes. she was like live tweeting your reactions to things. Yes, she was. Um, yeah, she did a very good job taking things over, and she has a very good sense of humor. Um, and yeah, when when we drove into, um, uh, drove up to the BronyCon venue, which was. Um, you know, this big convention center in Secaucus, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just mind boggling how many <laughs> fans were there and my jaw dropped and she took a picture of me with my jaw dropped and of the fans <laughs> at the window. And it was, yeah, that was pretty phenomenal. I remember that picture. That was hilarious. That was one <laughs> of the best reaction shots I've ever seen. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And she, she also, she did non Pony related things, uh, mocking how fast I walk um, <laughs> as we were walking through LA. Because I was trying to get like from point A to point B, because you know point A had air conditioning and point B had air conditioning. So I was like, let's move it, let's move it. But, <laughs> and I want to walk fast. I walk fast, and she's you know got shorter legs. And I'm short, but she has shorter legs. And she was you know we're both dying from the the heat. Oh, so yeah. that was so she was mocking me a lot, which was. <laughs> Deserved, I guess. Oh, uh, it's a it, it's a sign of a good uh, relationship that people can mock each other and not be truly offended. And of course, I'd like to mention again: Are you s- anticipating karaoke and future cons? Um, you, you, you rocked it in the videos that I saw. <laughs> thank you. I would be happy to always sing. You know, it's, that's that's never a question for me. It's just. You know, uh, I don't want to be a stage hog. It's more, it's yeah, it's more like okay, give somebody else a turn, Amy. Um, yeah, <laughs> well, I, I, I think honestly, at these cons, they're like, let her talk more, guys. <laughs> no, it, yeah, I would absolutely do that again. That was very fun. Well, and something, uh, some of the, we mentioned shows that you worked on in the past, but <laughs> right now you are working on um, Care Bears and uh, Littlest Pet Shop. Is that right? Oh, I'm not on Littlest Pet Shop. Oh, gosh. Ah. That's okay. <laughs> it would make sense for me to be on Littlest Pet Shop. I did do li- some Littlest Pet Shop webisodes. So maybe that's, that's why. That's that. what I'm thinking of. Okay. It was the webisodes that confused me. I apologize. Not the show, the webisodes. <laughs> yeah, I did the webisodes. I wrote one of the songs in the webisodes. Um, the, the, was that Meow Manor? Uh, yeah, Meow Manor is the okay. song. Um, and yes, I was the story editor of the, uh, new Care Bears show, Care Bears Come to Care a lot. Woohoo! Yay! Yay, Care Bears. I, I, I admit, uh, ashamedly, I have not watched much of, as much of the new Care Bears. Uh, it is harder for me to watch the shows uh, as they come out, but from what I've seen, it's, it's incredibly cute. It's a very cute show. They, yeah. they, um, they've done a really nice job with it. Um, the texture of the fur on the bears is really cool. Oh yeah. Um, and yeah, I got to work with um, Cindy Morrow was one of my writers, um, and then actually a writer who is on season three, uh, Pony, wrote oh. um, on Care Bears oh, with okay. me, and her episodes um, haven't her season three episodes haven't aired yet, so. Right. Y'all don't know her yet. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Look forward to it. 
Yeah. We'll have okay. someone new we can bronify with love. Yes, because um, she, I actually, when I, um, you know, I always do a, um, a shout out to my writers when I, I post a clip mm-hmm. of the Care Bears episode that's going to be on and I, and I give a shout out and she's not actually on Twitter. So oh. I just put her, you know, her real name mm. and I told the bronies to pay attention to that name because they it might become familiar to them soon. Ooh. So, um, yeah, so you will see. I, I don't. I don't know when her episode, her name's Corey Powell. It's not that big of a mystery. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't know if we had to dance around it anymore or just say it. But okay, okay. I'm happy around it. She's she she wrote an episode. She's because she's written a couple of the Care Bears. I forget how many Care Bears she wrote. She wrote like four or five or something. And I don't know how many she uh, how many Pony episodes she wrote. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's terrific. Um, but yeah, I got to work with really great writers and um and it was nice the all of the voiceover stuff whereas pony's done in canada right um, the voiceover recordings um for care bears was here in la okay so my favorite days of the week was tuesdays when i got to go <laughs> to the recording and hear the actors um you know read the stuff mm-hmm. and we had we have a really fantastic cast mm-hmm. uh, playing the bears and and so that was really fun to be in there and um you know as you know you you go in there and sometimes lines just don't work they look right. fantastic on the page but sure, sure. It comes out of somebody's mouth that just sounds ridiculous or clumsy right. so i would be in there. and i would guess um at least at some point the uh the as good as they are the actor might not get what you intended by it yeah and yeah. I, I just don't, why do you have this phrasing here or something? Right. I, I guess it would be advantageous for you to be right there and said, well, I kind of meant it like uh, accent it's, this word. Exactly. And, and I actually, you know, there were things that were often funny to me that weren't funny. To, <laughs> <laughs> Cause uh, oh, what's, um, have you seen the movie Winnebago man? I have not, but now I okay. will look for it. It's, it's a documentary Okay. and it's, hilarious um and there's a line in it that's become like a line that's known he says will you do me a kindness Ah, okay. and um i had i'm pretty sure i had grumpy say that will you do me a kindness and nobody got it i'm like did <laughs> you see winnebago man so we ended up changing it to will you give me some help <laughs> oh okay <laughs> And I didn't know which way they went with it. Um, the episode actually aired this week. I said, oh, did they put do me a kindness? And it was like, no. And it, <laughs> you know, it, was, it was an inside joke for me. That's the only person it was for. <laughs> and that they, you know, chose the line reading that wouldn't confuse children. <laughs> so, that's it. That's how you gotta go. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sometimes the it's too vague of a reference, and that's right. unfortunate. So it's yeah, it's so inside that it just flies over everybody's head. <laughs> so, oh well. Well, one question that I tend to ask all of my guests, and I'm curious, is your yours is going to be slightly different, but <laughs> in all of My Little Pony, is there one scene or line that defines you? Mm. And you have a special insight into this, having written a large number of these lines. Yeah. I mean, so many of Applejack's lines actually are things that I say. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so she says, and everybody, this gets misquoted. Um, she says nuts and chews, C-H-E-W-S, chews, nuts and chews, uh-huh. which is something that I say, um, which is based off of a box of C's candy. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> Because because there are boxes of C's candy that are nuts and chews. They have either nuts or they're chewy, so they're nuts and chews. Oh, uh, okay. All right. right. And my dad used to get lots of boxes of C's candy um, at Christmas time because he's an ophthalmologist and his patients would give him boxes of C's candy. Okay, okay. So we had boxes and boxes at Christmas time of nuts and chews. <laughs> and so it's just something that's always been in my head, and I always thought it would it's an amusing non curse word mm-hmm. and say it and you're not really saying anything bad. Right. Right. But you say it. Um, I don't know. There are things that, um, that Applejack has said that I don't know whether some of them got in and some of them didn't. Right. I don't know. And a, a lot of them are, I love Lucy isms sure. things I, that I've stolen from. I love Lucy. So like, here's your hat. What's your hurry mm-hmm. is something. 
don't know if Applecats actually said that, but I know I've tried to make her say that. <laughs> um, and oh, oh, what's one of her other ones? Oh, I'm not thinking of it. Um, <laughs> Nuts, nuts and chews. Uh, <laughs> I like that one, frankly. That's that sounds good. Nuts and chews. I mean, that's that's. that's Honestly, that's... just hearing it, you say it at first, I thought it was nuts and shoes that right, you were nuts saying. Right, nuts and shoes, which I think is what people think Applejack is saying that she's saying nuts and shoes, but she's saying nuts and chews. Ch- nuts ch- and chews. Ch- <laughs> chews. Okay. Um, but now I'm trying to think. <laughs> oh, there's another good Applejack one. Um. I don't know if she got to say this, but I know I don't know if they changed it. Okay. Um, but for corn's sake, C O R N apostrophe S for corn's sake. Okay. It's like for Pete's sake. Right, right. Um, but her, but and and that's a uh, it's something that Fred Mertz says. I'm okay. uh, I'm a really big I love Lucy nerd, um, <laughs> but but Fred Mertz would say, oh, for corn's sake, and <laughs> and so. For me, getting Applejack is my in to to speak speaking my I love Lucyisms. Right. Otherwise, right. I I would have to try and think of a Pinkie Pie mm. line. Um, but yeah, the the ones that jump out to me are, are Applejacks. That's nice. Not sh- yeah. shoes. Okay, so now I know it's not horseshoes or a play on horseshoes. It's gotcha. Nuts and chews. Gotcha. You know, it's very random. I, I oh, appreciate. those are the best. <laughs> yeah, if you say a word that everybody knows, it doesn't make sense. But if you say something like that, they have to. What? What did you say? Right. And you've achieved your goal. Well, and I was trying to figure out whether it had ended up in an episode, and mm-hmm. um, and so I actually I did a search on my computer to see if I'd put nuts and chews in there. Okay. And I found it. I found it in my script. Mm-hmm. And then I said, okay, well, if if it made it into the, you know, just because it's in my script doesn't mean that she said it in the episode. So then I did a Google search and I put nuts and shoes and nuts and shoes came up. Oh. Because I think it was on a YouTube clip and somebody, uh, I, I put, you know, Applejack, nuts and shoes. Mm-hmm. And I put Applejack, nuts and shoe, shoes. And everybody's <laughs> thinking it's shoes. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's always funny to... Uh, you have created your own version of the Louis Louis song. Nobody knows exactly what she's saying, so they make up their own words. Exactly. <laughs> well, it's fun to watch the episodes, and um, and you know, sometimes I'll laugh at things, and I'll go, "Did I write that?" <laughs> um, and then I go back in my script, and sometimes I have, and sometimes I haven't, and that's just kind of um, kind of the way it goes because sure. things, things get uh, changed. Uh, you know, Robert and Zeddy was the story editor right. for seasons one and two. And so he would end up adjusting things and write his own funny things. And sure, sure. So, oh, wow, that's funny. Oh, Rob wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know um, a question that's been asked to some of the panels. Some people have said, have there been any lines or scenes that have been cut uh, mm-hmm. that you remember? But I, I don't know. This, uh, this is somewhat related. But has there been any line or scene that you thought of after the fact? Like you turned your script in and you're like, oh, I should have said that. Hmm. Um, gosh, not that I'm thinking of. I mean, it's so hard because you have to realize I wrote these at this oh, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sorry. Time ago. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I mean, and I think, honestly, with that question, I mean, you know, I mean, unless it's very specific to the situation, if it's mm-hmm. a good joke, just put it in the next episode, right? Right. Yeah. Anytime um, I have to cut things like I'll write just kind of funny stuff mm-hmm. and um and I realize okay I'm gonna go over my page count and I have to go through and start cutting things right. I'll cut the I'll, I'll cut what's called the dead wood mm-hmm. the things that don't further the plot and you it's only there because you you think it's funny okay but but since it's not you know motivating the action you just go okay I gotta cut this out I always have a separate um, document open where I paste those things uh-huh. because I don't want to lose them because right. it's comedy gold. Yeah. And so I put that in there in case, um, you know, at some point I could plop it back into another script Yeah. yeah. and then, you know, just, just see how that goes. Um, sure. Waste not want not that, that makes absolute sense. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, pretty much, I would, I mean, I, I would have to look and see what my little extra, I could do that. 
<laughs> I could look through my files and see extra stuff because I, I generally had little things that had. I'm I'm just saying you, you should save those and just at some point, uh, quote unquote, leak them or uh -huh. part of them to an eBay source and just see how much funding you can get. Well, that's yeah. No, I should do that. That would be um, <laughs> that would be a wise uh, money maker. Yeah, you could. It, it might provide a nice little nest egg at this point. I think. I'm just I'm skimming really quick to see if I have it. Oh well. Um, uh, uh, little, uh, Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo had a wrap in oh. in cutie pox that I had to cut. Oh, oh. and it's you know it's, I thought it was cute, but it got cut after the you know the first draft. It was like later, get rid of yeah. uh, that's not something I cut out of. Uh, I thought it I wanted it to stay there, but sure. other people didn't, so it moved along. Uh -huh. It's fine. Well, I would uh, imagine that if, if you're writing an episode, if a song is crucial, of course it's going to stay, but right. I would guess, you know, those are, I mean, they take up a lot of time. So, yeah, I mean, it was a very quick rap. It okay. wasn't, you know, it didn't take, it, it's, it wasn't a lot of lines. Um, where is it? <laughs> That's okay. No pressure on that one, but um, it's when um, it's right before she's going into, uh, into the Everfree Forest. Okay. And, and so the so they're trying to cheer her up at uh, Apple okay. towards the Everfree Forest. Um and and so they start rapping at her, which I understand didn't necessarily make any sense, but <laughs> I, but I thought it was hilarious. That, um, yeah, that that honestly that would have been I know there's uh quite a few Scootaloo fans who have been and, upset that her only song has been the uh warped uh, cutie mark crusaders theme song and they would have oh, loved right. to hear her really shout something out oh that would have been cool okay found it found it oh okay. we have found it okay so this is the scootaloo sweetie bell rap it's the rap song okay so sweetie bell starts it and um i'm not gonna be able to do bo both voices obviously of course uh, so i'm just singing it as if it's one okay okay and hopefully i'll remember it <laughs> <Let's see. laughs> Um, apple bloom, apple bloom, you know what they say. If you do not watch out, your face will freeze that way. <laughs> I'm sorry, I feel really silly. Oh yeah, apple bloom girl, you best pick up that lower lip. Otherwise that droopy lip is gonna make you trip. Apple bloom, apple bloom. We wanna see your smiling face instead of doom and gloom. Apple bloom, apple bloom. Stop all of this sad moping and cheer up soon. And then Scootaloo said, word. <laughs> that was brilliant. Thank you. That was amazing. You can probably tell why it was cut now. <laughs> I would have loved it. I, I could see why you fought for it. Yeah, it was, oh, well, you know, that happened. But yeah, that's, that's, there you go. That's what got cut. So guys. If she comes to other cons, now you know which songs to bug her about, including the rap. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll do a better version of it then. Oh, no, no, I don't. I, I, I like the unpolished version of raps, quite frankly. You can tell I'm not a rapper. Well, neither are Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo, so, you know. That is very true. <laughs> it works. Yeah, as, as we've seen from their, their singing skills uh, mm -hmm. previously, it wasn't so hot. Well, everybody, um, today I have, been talk ha I have been talking with Amy Keating Rogers, a uh, very prolific writer amongst... Uh, MLP and other things and everybody please go check out her Kickstarter Jason Bateman thinks I'm dead it's uh, the link is going to be right underneath the video uh, please please go check it out donate what you can we would really like to see this thing get funded yes please thank you very 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 much <laughs> see there you go you got eight varies right yes. there and you can't beat that <laughs> thank you very much for talking with us today you're welcome. It was fun. Thank you. Yes. All right, everybody. This has been Osaka Jack with Into the Spotlight. We will catch you next time.